Hi, I'm Mel Pickup, Chief Executive of Bradford Teaching Hospitals, and welcome to the News Roundup from across the Trust. This week, you will find me in one of our comfy staff rooms because we're taking a look at how the money that you have raised for Bradford Hospital's charity has been spent supporting our patients and our colleagues. We also mark a key milestone in the local COVID-19 vaccination programme, and we find out how new research in Bradford may help people who suffer with painful eye symptoms to recover more quickly. But first, the number of patients in our hospitals with COVID-19 has now reached the same level that we saw during the first wave of the pandemic. As the new year began, coronavirus was the reason behind a third of staff sickness absences in the Trust. Here's our Chief Nurse, Karen Dorber, to explain what we can all do now to help to protect our patients and colleagues. So there's two main changes to our visiting rules. One is that you are only allowed one named person to visit you. The second change is that we're asking everybody that comes to visit somebody in hospital to take a lateral flow test. That needs to be taken just before you come and visit and please bring the results with you when you attend and show that to the staff on the ward. Just before Christmas, we have round about 40, 45 patients in our bed base with COVID. As of this week, we've got around about 100 patients. Two years ago, at the start of the first wave, or by the end of the first wave, we had around about 100 patients in our bed base as well. Our staff are also a part of our community, and we currently have a large number of staff off or self-isolating because of COVID. But we are trying our very, very best all of our services are still running. So unless you hear from us to cancel an appointment or to cancel an operation, please attend as you would normally do so. Thanks, Karen. And if you would like more information about visiting our hospitals, please do go to the website below. Now we have news for patients who suffer from uveitis, a condition which causes inflammation of the eye. Uveitis can be painful and affect the quality of a person's vision. So here in Bradford, we're running two trials to test for the most effective treatment. Here's consultant ophthalmic surgeon, Helen Davenport, to explain more. In about 50% of cases, we don't know what causes it, but we do know how to treat it. And in the other 50% of cases, it's associated with systemic diseases. Traditionally, we would treat uveitis that's threatening the sight with steroid drops, but they don't work for the back of the eye. So we need to give systemic steroids, so that's steroid tablets. But there are many side effects associated with systemic tablets. And that's why we then um, introduce uh, drugs called immunosuppressive drugs to reduce inflammation and allow us to reduce the doses of steroids either to nothing or to safe levels for long-term treatment. One of the studies the patients will be randomised either to receive adalimumab or a conventional immunosuppressant, whereas in the other study, to begin with, all patients will be treated for a minimum of four months with the adalimumab. It'll be one to two years before we get useful results back on these trials, but when we do, um, we will have more of an idea of which are the most appropriate immunosuppressant drugs to use for which particular uveitis condition. Thanks, Helen. We'll be watching how the trial progresses with interest. Now it's time to take a quick tour around the rest of the Trust to see what other news is making the headlines. We're really sorry to see you go, David. A big thank you 
for all your hard work and we wish you the best for your well-deserved retirement. Finally, despite the recent financial pressures many have been experiencing, we were bowled over by the love and support our community showed us last year. Bradford Hospital's charity reports that they've spent more than 300,000 of your donations, which means that we can make a huge difference to the experiences of our patients and colleagues. Here's Head of Fundraising, Hayley Collis, to explain how your money has benefited so many. So the majority of the money has been spent on supporting our patients. This has included additional medical equipment, as well as things like TVs and entertainment equipment for wards and departments, as well as the Wi-Fi Spark and the, uh, the music license so that wards and departments can play music. So some of the money was spent on supporting our NHS staff, which includes two cycle hubs, one here at BRI and one at St Luke's as well as the wobble rooms that we've been able to kit out with fridges and microwaves so staff are able to take a well-earned break uh, and then go back to see their patients uh, well and refreshed. To those who donated or fundraised last year, I'd like to say a huge thank you. And if you'd like to join us in 2022, you could skydive, you could join us on the Three Peaks or you could do your own thing. Just contact us at the charity for more information. Thanks Hayley, we're so lucky to have such a supportive community. Well that's it for this week and as usual, all our latest news and updates can be found on our social media channels, Twitter, LinkedIn and Facebook. And don't forget, it's really quick and it's really easy to get your first, second or booster jab across the district. It's the best possible protection for you and your loved ones against Omicron. You can find details of the most convenient clinic for you by going to the link below. Do take care, stay safe, and I'll look forward to seeing you again next week. Bye for now.